30 have only witnessed war, only understood war. On behalf of U.S. foreign policy, that is their solution. 12 years ago, the U.S. devastated Iraq. The ground invasion which they claimed, oh, accident here. The police should be okay. Again, 12 years after the invasion of Iraq. And today when the U.S. is sounding the war drum again against Iran, when it's funding rebel groups in Syria, when it's declaring a national threat, that Venezuela is a national threat. We have to remember Iraq. Iraq, a country that has now been devastated. A mil more than a million people killed. They're still finding time, energy to resist. But it's a year, it's a population that suffered trauma. That is the U.S. policy. And on the other side to that, and so aside from killing people around the world, we also find ourselves in a time of deep inequity deep poverty in the U.S. A time when student debt has gone through the roof, the students have no future. A time when there's low wages that people can't even afford to live where they work. A time when like here in San Francisco we could have the wealthiest people benefiting from the profits of war, but we have people in poverty who can't live, who live on the streets, who can't have a job, who have no future. Those are the contradictions of, of a policy of war and violence in that the profit, the people who profit from war and violence kill and maim people abroad. They send other people to be killed and maimed. And those who are left over are just meant to suffer under the boots of war, imperialism, and violence. So we're here, year, 12 years later, we're still here. 12 years later, we're still with the message that we, the U.S. people, we are tired of war. And that's why we'll keep coming out, coming together with our different communities. And so we thank you for being here. We have a list of speakers. We're going to start with our chance. We're so thankful for everybody to come out here so that the U.S. government, those in power, don't think they can just wage endless war on the backs of poor and working people. So we say, money for jobs and education, not for war and occupation. Money for jobs and education, not for war and occupation. Money for jobs and education, not for war and occupation. Money for jobs and education, not for war and occupation. Money for health and education, not for war and occupation. Money for health care and education, not for war and occupation. Money for housing and education, not for war and occupation. Money for housing and education, not for war and occupation. No justice, no peace. You rest out of the Middle East, no justice, no peace. You rest out of the Middle East, no justice, no peace. U.S. out of the Middle East, no justice, no peace. U.S. out of the Middle East, no justice, no peace. U.S. out of the Middle East, no justice, no peace. U.S. out of the Middle East, no peace. Excuse me, are you are you going to be there the whole time? For a while, yes. So we're going to say, no more against the red. Okay, U.S. Well, out of Afghanistan. I'm screaming. No more against the red.
the struggle against gentrification, the struggle for housing. All these things are connected to the issue of war because again, for every missile, we just see a sample of a drone here, for every drone that they spend millions of dollars on, that could be millions of dollars that can go to save a public school. That could go millions of dollars to provide health care to families. Millions of dollars that can provide housing. In San Francisco, we have a major housing crisis where only the wealthy are being accepted. But the poor and working people are being kicked out. So far... Shout out to Vicky. Thanks for watching. All right, brothers and sisters. We say, Wall Street's war, we say no. Occupation's got to go. Wall Street's war, we, we say, say no. no. Occupation has got to go. Wall Street's war, we say no. Occupation has got to go. Wall Street's war, we say no. Occupation has got to go. Wall Street's war, we say no. Occupation has got to go. Wall Street's war, we say no. Occupation has got to go. Wall Street's war, we say no. Occupation has got to go. Wall Street's war. We say no. Occupation has got to go. Wall Street's war. We say no. Occupation has got to go. My brothers and sisters, occupation is a crime. From the right to Palestine, we're going to have a number of speakers addressing the issue of Palestine, the liberation of Palestine, especially after the openly now fascist Netanyahu has been elected, has removed, removed all discussions about two-state solution. So we say occupation is a crime from the right to Palestine. Occupation is a crime. 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 Brothers and sisters, starting with the program, we have Rick Sterling, the Marine Task Force on the Americas. Yeah, hello everybody. It's great to see everybody here. Uh, Task Force on the Americas has been working for 35 years, taking tours to South America, to Central America. We've uh, sent delegations to Honduras, to Uruguay, to Cuba upcoming, uh, to Venezuela. We, were, we had observers in Honduras for the Honduran election. We had observers in Venezuela around the time of the election there. U.S. is deathly afraid of the dramatic changes that are sweeping what they used to call our backyard. The U.S. was a part of the coup that overthrew the liberal government in Honduras in 2009. Uh, the U.S. is part of the attempt to destabilize Venezuela. They're calling Venezuela a threat to the U.S. It's not a threat to the American people by no means. Venezuela sent fuel oil to poverty communities on the east coast of the U.S. just a few years ago when they had a bitter cold winter. Uh, Venezuela is uh, a representative of the American people. It's our friend. It's an enemy of Wall Street. It's an enemy of U.S. empire. It's standing up to empire. So I would ask anybody who's interested uh, in joining Task Force on the Americas to speak with one of our members who are over here with the banner, Task Force on the Americas. And it's great to be in solidarity with you here today. Uh, Hugo Chavez was an inspiration for Venezuela. He led them. He died two years ago. He's still a symbol of justice and freedom. Uh, when I say Hugo Chavez, you say presente. Hugo Chavez. Presente. Hugo Chavez. Presente. Hugo Chavez. Presente. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Obama says endless war, we say no more. Obama says endless war, we say no more. Obama says endless war, we say no more. Obama says no endless war, we say no more. Obama says endless war, we say no more. Right, brothers and sisters, our next speaker is Father Louis Vitelli, just back from the Creech drone base protest. So please welcome Father Louis. Yay! Yay. Here we are again. 
Here we are again. Here we are again. Here we are again. Here we are again. You know? Oh, I mean, you know, I'm a Franciscan, you know, with my hood and everything and all of that. And, and I come from a family. My father was born here in 1902. He came over here to get away from the, uh, they thought they could get away from dueling wars. Then they found out that everybody was being drafted and sent to war. But I was, uh, went to war, I mean, I was supposed to go to war to fight in Korea. Now, isn't that a nice thought? Guess what? I never thought that we would, uh, I was kind of upset that I got in just as they were stopping fighting. Okay, yes. Right now, we're in one war after another. It's impossible. And the, and the president, who we elected thinking he would stop wars, has got a budget for $50 billion. Not millions, not trillions, now it's $15 billion to redo all of our weapons. $30 million for the nuclear bombs, $3 million, and uh, uh, Sister, Sister Marie Margate, uh, excuse me, uh, our, I lived with her for five years. Yeah, Sister Margate, she's in prison. Uh, Kathy, Kathy Kelly is in prison. Uh, and now down in, in, if this was, if we were in, in uh, Jeju Island in Korea, they would be, we would be out here and the bishops would be out there. The bishop there, he calls all the people to go to jail, go to jail. He has all the nuns, except somebody, his priest came over to find out from me, who's been working with people in San Francisco. He's gotten a red, red a few hundred times, times arrested like last week, got a priest. We went out there, we were able to stop them, maybe a one or two or three from leaving. We nailed down some of his old folks, some of the other folks. But it's right there, right next to the test site where they're testing nuclear bombs, still testing nuclear bombs, which is still part of uh, Nellis Air Force Base and the, probably the largest storage of, of nuclear bombs in this part of the world. And yet we want more and more and more. And so we got to stop this crazy war. Nobody wants it. I went to Iran to say people had put out, we had a group here, and we met to say that uh, Bush had said, said that, uh, you know, this is our, our enemy, you know, our, 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 our place, for, you know, this is the people. We said, no, these are the good people. And all these people I thought we were going to fight with, no, nobody wants to fight. In the Korean War, we didn't want to fight. In the, in the war, in the First World War, nobody wanted to fight. In the Second World War, nobody really wanted to fight. Nobody wants that war. Now, people in, in they're not Muslims. I get so upset when people say they're all out and they have to kill people. Even my own dear sister, who I buried a few weeks ago, I'm still trying to convince her no religion wants to kill people. I went over to the school, the top school in, in uh, Iran, the top school in the Koran, and they go on and on and on. And I, Mennonites go there to study because they want to study all the religions because they're pacifists and they believe in that. And if they wouldn't stay there five minutes if they were trying to start a war. So we got to stop this crazy war. We're in the city of Franciscan love. And so uh, let's, let's really live like, uh, like those who, uh, not the brain, it's the heart that's supposed to be running the world. We've got to, to you know, we've got to be in every, we all love each other. Look at how everybody here, we're we rather be having a love-in like the old love-ins we had here. That's the real thing. That's the real San Francisco. So let's stop this war and stop the, these are always big people. It's the billionaires right here in the finance district. And that's the ones that are making the decision. That's not coming from the brain, it's coming from the, from the heart. It should be coming from, but from the brain. So they don't know their biology, they don't know their medicine, they don't know, they don't know anything about compromise, love. They don't know about, about love. So we got to all love each other like cold pink. They're everywhere showing love. What did we have, 30 people there at, at, at Creech? Code Pink, we had about 30 of Code Pink there, all getting arrested. we got to go to court again and again and again. And the DRC wrote more about it, so let's, let's make a peace. This is San Francisco. We should be the leaders in peace. Peace now. Peace now. Peace now. What do you want? Peace now. What do we want? Peace now. What do we want? Peace now. Peace now. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good afternoon, San Francisco! My name is Mara Kiswani. I'm with AROP, Arab Research and Organizing Center, and we're very happy to be here with you today to lift up the voices of the Arab people, the Arab people that are resisting from Iraq to Palestine, from Egypt to Tunisia, from Europe. 
right here in your own backyard in San Francisco. We all say no to war. If you guys recall, in 2001, we stood out here to stand against the war on Afghanistan. And then people told us it's just the war on Afghanistan and it's justified. And we said no. They told us in 2001 that Afghanistan had nothing to do with Latin America. That Afghanistan had nothing to do with Africa. That Afghanistan had nothing to do with Southeast Asia. And we told them we know better. In 2003, we mobilized the hundreds of thousands of people right here in San Francisco against the war on Iraq. We knew then and we know now that U.S. war is about empire. That the war on Iraq is the same war that's on the Palestinian people. The war on Iraq is the same war against the Afghanistani people. The war on Iraq is the same interest of the interventions in the Philippines, the interventions in Latin America, the interventions in Syria. We know that when they do warmongering and try to convince the U.S. public and the international community that Iran is our next target, that Syria is our next target, that the Palestinian people are our ongoing target, we know that we say no to war. No. They told us in 2003 that Palestine had nothing to do with Iraq. They tried to tell us that we can't raise the flag of Palestine on the stages against the war, an anti-war protest. They told us recently that we can't talk about Palestine and the uprisings and the mobilizations in support of Egypt and Tunisia. And the Arab people and all people of conscience knew better. We know that the Zionist state, that Israel is part and parcel of the U.S. war and empire. We know that the United States and Israel are partners in crime. And we know that so long as Zionism exists, so too will state violence in this country. So too will the occupation of Palestine and all over the Arab world. And so too will U.S. empire. So we say no to Zionism. We say no to occupation. We stand with the resistance of the Iraqi people. We stand with the resistance of the Palestinian people. And as Arabs and as third world people, we also stand with the resistance of black and brown people in this country. Today is the anniversary of the murder of Alex Nieto. We cannot talk about Palestine war and occupation without talking about police violence in this country. We cannot talk about empire without talking about state violence. We know that the murder of Alex Nieto, the murder of Oscar Grant, of Trayvon Martin, are all an inextricably linked to the war and occupation of our homeland. We know that state violence here feeds empire, and we know that empire feeds state violence, and we will march here today, and we will continue to speak out against all forms of war and empire. and deciders and commanders 
of the Middle East and North Africa. But in reality, the U.S. is absolutely incapable of bringing liberation to anybody, anywhere. Nothing good for the people will come from more war and occupation in the service of this empire. And I want to answer a question the reporter just asked me. Why is it that millions marched in 2003? Why is it that even in 2008, the anti-war movement was much, much larger because people had come to see and hate Bush regime's occupation and wars? Why are so many people now out of the streets and even worse, drawn into accepting new wars today? I think there's different reasons, but one main reason right now is that people are being fooled and bamboozled behind the excuse and the lie that anything the U.S. does is justified because somebody has to stop ISIS. Well, where did ISIS come from? It was a response to the U.S. hand in the region. It was literally fueled and armed by billions of dollars of U.S. arms thrown all over the place. And it's been funded by U.S. allies, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Turkey. Nothing the U.S. does is going to stop the violence of ISIS. ISIS is a reactionary and violent and brutal force. It has nothing good for the people under its control. But ISIS is bad, and the U.S. empire is far worse. It has been, it is now, and it's going to be until it's stopped. I know that is controversial out beyond this ring of people, but this is what we have to go out and argue with people about. You cannot let your government do with ISIS what they did with weapons of mass destruction, which is get all the people in this country to think we have no choice but to follow this government into war. That's right. Okay, I've got to stop. <laughs> I just want to say, World Can't Wait says crimes are crimes no matter who does them. Please go to our website. We have a new timeline up starting three days after 9-11 going to the present. You can use it to argue with people as to what the nature of this war is and why they should stand against it and join in the protest. We also have the open letter to the people of Iran, which was initiated by the AMSA coalition. We want you to come on our website, sign the letter. It was done in response to the reactionary letter by the 47 senators who are threatening Iran. And this is a good response. It's something we can do today. And overall, I want to say to the youth, Sister Laura is absolutely correct. Oscar Grant, Trayvon Martin, Eric Garner, Michael Brown, they also live in Iraq and Afghanistan and Syria. And if we can go out in our hundreds of thousands, which was so beautiful, to stop police murder and terror in this country, that same outrage and tears and anger and determination need to come forth in the streets today against these wars. The world can't wait. Money for a job fair in their education? No more war and occupation. Money for a job fair in their education? No more war and occupation. Money for a housing and their education? No more war and occupation. Money for a job fair in their education? No more war and occupation. Our next speaker is Mazda from the Party for Socialism and Liberation. Brothers and sisters, it's great to be here. Many of us have been here time and time again for 12 years, really before that. So 12 years ago at this time, the U.S. and its junior imperialist partners invaded Iraq. Why? Well, they told us weapons of mass destruction. They told us that there's the danger of a mushroom cloud over Washington, D.C. And if you took that reasoning, at face value, it seems outrageous. Iraq has been under sanctions for 12, 13 years. Over a million Iraqis have lost their lives because they haven't had access to medicine, to food. How could a country that has been bombed continuously for 12 years be a danger to Washington? But when you think of the real reason, of course, everyone knows that weapons of mass destruction was a broken justification. But the real reason was that an independent Stop here. Uh, cramping up, Brooke. It's so hot outside.
Yeah. I've done better. Um, well, anyway, I'm going to let the stream go, folks. Thanks for watching. This has been Freeman Sullivan at KPFA Stream. Uh, in the future, if you want to check out our videos, uh, just go to kpfa.org and click on the video link on the left-hand side. Anyway, we thank you for watching, and uh, have a great day.